<laughs> and no, no business being with them with my homeboy JT. <laughs> and we in that gambling. And, and, and I'm looking at, I'm, I'm counting my money as I'm gambling. Uh -huh. And I'm scared how it's going to That's too much money. I can't let that out. So I'm, I'm, and the man told me, scared money don't make money. Mm -hmm. If you want to get money, you got to be willing to let go of what's in your hand. If you hold it back what's in your hand, you ain't going to get nothing. You got to be willing to lose what you have in order to win. Mm -hmm. Scared money don't make money. Mm -hmm. Now, bring that mindset to the kingdom. If you come into the kingdom and you are afraid to let it go, then God cannot give nothing back to you because you are afraid to release. Mm -hmm. If you want release, you cannot receive. Amen, amen. If you are afraid to release, in order for you to receive something, the hand got to be open. If the hand is tight, can't nobody put nothing in your hand. It's too tight. You got to open your hand up so that somebody can put something in it. Scared money don't make money. You got to be willing to give in order to receive. Now, if I knew, if my dad knew, I knew that he probably would. <laughs> now you ain't got no business doing that. Uh, who told you that? Who told you that? We don't talk about that anymore. You ain't you been somewhere you ain't got no business being. You, you don't been somewhere you ain't got no business. I ain't never take you to no gambling hall. <laughs> All right, what I told y'all? Oh, I told y'all first group. First group. All right. I told y'all about tithing. Let me get, let me get, get, get back to tithing. Tithing, what is tithing? Tithing is the 10%. Tithing is the 10% that we give unto the Lord. Now, people say tithing is the law. The law will be taken away. Let me give you this understanding about tithing. Tithing was established before the law was established. Over 400 years before Moses came with the law, Abraham and his sons were tithers. Over 400 years before Moses came forward with the law, Abraham and his sons were already tithers. The Bible says God chose Abraham because he would teach his sons the ways of God. Mm -hmm. Not only did Abraham tithe, but his son tithe. Now, common sense tells you the reason why Abraham tithed, there had to be some type of understanding or some type of conversation with God that God let Abraham know that tithing was something he needed to do. Why did he give the 10? Why did he give 10%? There had to be some type of conversation that let Abraham know that tithing was the thing to do. Because the Bible says when he saw the priest for Chelsea, that he gave him 10%. Why did he give him 10? Why not 15? Why not 3? Why not 2? Why 10? There had to be some type of knowledge, some type of understanding. And then the son did the same thing. Where did this knowledge come from? Okay, let me give you another illustration. When you look at Cain and Abel and the way they gave their offering, mm -hmm. the Bible doesn't show us where God told them how to give their offering. Mm -hmm. That's not written in Scripture. Mm -hmm. You don't read where God told or showed or gave an example to Cain and Abel of how to present their offering. But we do read that God rejected one of them. Mm -hmm. So there had to be some type of knowledge, some type of understanding that those boys had received from their father or from God on how to present the offer. And that's how they knew what to do and what not to do. Otherwise, God is not just. If you punish me for something you never talked to me about, that is not a just God. But if you tell me how to do it and I go against what you tell me and you punish me, that's just. Amen. God is a just God. Yeah. So there had to be some type of understanding on what was acceptable and what was not acceptable. So when we see scripture and Abraham, the Bible calls him the father of the faithful. That's us. He is our father. He is the beginning of Christianity. He was the one God called out and said, leave your family, leave your kindred, and follow me, and I will take you to a land that you have not seen, and I will make your name great, and I will make your blessing to all the earth. He is the first Christian. He is the first believer. He is the father of the faith. He believed God, and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. He was the first of us. We follow the suit of our father. Amen. That was way before the law ever came. He was a type. Now,
Now, if the law did not establish tithing, then the law cannot take it away. Mm. If the law did not establish tithing, the law cannot take it away. Mm. It was established before the law ever came. Mm. All right. Now, once again, to the corner of mine, you ain't going to understand spiritual things. <laughs> if you don't want to tithe, you ain't going to understand tithing, and you're going to try to figure out it. And that's your right. You have the right to do whatever you want to do. I'm just delivering the truth. What you do with it is up to you. <laughs> but a corner of mine don't want to understand spiritual things because there's something else you want to do. You want to go to TJ Maxx with your team. <laughs> you want to go to Red Lobster with your team. And it's your team. You do whatever you want to do. But I'm trying. I'm just trying for those who have a desire to know or to understand the word of God, the you, you cannot cancel, the, the law cannot cancel what it did not establish. Amen. Amen. It was established 400 years before Moses ever came on the scene. Amen. So that's the time. We get 10% because that's what God told us to do. That's what he has commissioned us. It belongs to him. We give it back to him. And on top of that, we give an offering of our increase. All right, let me read this. I'm going to read all of this to you. And, um, yeah, back that clock. All right, number nine, verse number nine. Amen. Um, first, Amen. first Corinthians nine and nine. Go down to verse number fourteen, please. Nine and fourteen. Nine and nine through fourteen. Oh. Yes, please. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doeth God take care of the oxen? Or saith he, it all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing that we reap of your carnal things? If other be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they that wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that, that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Okay, now we're dealing with tithing. Why does, the, why does Abraham give the money to the priest? Because the priest was God's representation in the earth. Yeah. But Chesdick was God's representation in the earth. That was the way Abraham paid respect to God, was by finding the priest and giving his offering or giving his tithing to the priest. Why? Because the priest was God's representation in the earth. That's how God dealt with man in the earth. Now, why do we give tithing to the church? You give tithing to the church because this is the place that God, number one, has assigned you. Number one, God has assigned you. If you don't go to the church because you want to go, you go there because God has assigned you there. He has assigned you there. That's the place where God has assigned you. He has He ministers to you through that place. Yes. He ministers to you through that place. When you come into this building, you are edified by what you hear. You are edified, you are enlightened, you are made better by what you hear. And I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I'm just teaching you the truth of God's word. You are edified by what you hear. It helps you in life if you will take it. If you take what I preach to you, you will be delivered in your life. Your life will be for the better. I don't care who you are and what you're going through. This word can deliver you in your situation. If you will take this word and apply this word to your life, it will make you better. The same thing with me. If I take the word of God and apply it to my life, it will make me better. It will fix my marriage, it will fix my children, it will fix my business, my body, or anything I have problems with. If I take the word of life, the word will deliver Corey. He sent his word and healed them. There's life in the word. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel 
receive. It's what God ministers to you. It's what God strengthens you, what God speaks to you. And so you give to that, you give in that particular place. Now, understand this about ministry. This ministry is your responsibility. This ministry is your responsibility. If you get fed here, this ministry is your responsibility. That's right. This ministry is your responsibility. I don't have time to get it to you today, but read the first chapter of the book of Haggai. This ministry is your responsibility. You have a responsibility to this house, not to the ministry down the street or to the ministry around the corner, but to this house because this is where you receive the word from. Ain't nothing wrong with getting, going there and giving an offering there, but if this is the ministry where you are being fed, where God is speaking to you, strengthening you, and building you, ministering to your children, then this is your place. This is your house. You take care of your house before you take care of somebody else's Amen. house. It would be foolish of me to go pay somebody else's light bill, and my light bill is not paid. I take care of my house first, and then when my house is good, if I have something left, I can help somebody else. But my first priority is what? Your My house. That's where I eat. That's where I live. That's where God meets me. That's where God helps me. And so I take care of that house first. Now, let me tell you something else that's your responsibility. I'm your responsibility. Amen. That's true. I'm your responsibility. Amen. I think that's the first time I said that since I've been preaching. Yeah. I've never said that before. You're right. Yeah, it is. But I am your responsibility. Amen. My family, me and my family, we are your responsibility. Paul says, if I give the spiritual things to you, then what is it hard, or why is it hard for you give the, to give the natural things to me? If I'm, if I'm ministering life to you, if I'm teaching in you, teaching you, and building you up, and building your marriage up, and building your children up, and sowing the things of God into you, he says that you should take care of us. Yes. You should make sure that we have what we need. That's your responsibility. It is my responsibility to go before God and to get the bread of life and to prepare a good meal and come in here and serve that meal and it is your job to give me the natural things. Yeah. Ministry is not just my calling, it is also my vocation. Yeah. Uh -uh. Come on now. That's a true to be your only It is not just my calling, it is my vocation. It is what I do. Amen. It is who I am. I don't have nothing else. I'm not trying to be anything else. my calling and it is my vocation. And just like any other job. Yes. That's why he said don't muzzle the mark of the ox. He's not talking about the cow. He's talking about the, the preacher that's in there preaching, sweating, crying, praying. He said take care of him because don't have him doing all that and then have him having to go out there and scrape and scrub and do all kind of stuff to survive. He says that man is your responsibility. Not only him, but his family too. It is your responsibility. It is my ministry, true enough. It is my call, true enough. But it is also my vocation. It is also my vocation. That's, it's very important that you understand that. It's very important that I be bold enough to tell you that and let you know that and not back up from that because it is the word of God. God said it did like this. He said, this is the way I have ordained it. Now, if I'm not living right and I'm doing this and doing that, then you call me on it. But if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, then you fall in line with the word of God. Amen. You fall in line with the word of God. Okay. That's what we have. I'm going to leave you alone after that. <laughs> You're right, though. Yeah, and it takes a lot for me to say that. Yeah. I've, I've been preaching over 20 years. I've never said that. Yeah. You're right, though. And y'all hear, you know, I've never said that to you before. No, you're wrong. But you need to hear that. Amen. Because there is a blessing in your hand. Yes. And by me not teaching and giving to you, uh -huh. I'm hurting you. Yeah. Because you are not going to receive what God has for you until you learn how to sow. Amen. Until you learn how to give. Until you stop being coming, stop being afraid of giving. Don't allow the enemy to, to make you afraid of giving. If I give, I surely will receive. Right. Don't be afraid to let it go. Amen. There is a harvest coming. Amen. Yes, sir. There's a harvest coming. Don't, don't, don't let him talk you down to a cup 
couple of dollars or whatever. If all you have is a couple of dollars, then a couple of dollars is fine. But what happens to us as Christians is that when it comes down to giving to God, giving to the King, all kind of thoughts and things will come to our mind and talk us down and we'll take our offering and almost take it to nothing because the enemy talks to us. And that tears down your heart. But if you learn how to walk in faith and say, I'm going to give because it's the will of God and because I know there is a connection to my harvest and my giving, then now you release God to get involved and bring increase to you. But fear, scared money, I ain't going to make no money. Amen. And I give to receive. I don't know about you. Yes, sir. I give to receive. Yes. I'm looking for a heart. I got dreams. I got goals. Yes. I got ambition. Yes, sir. Yes. There's some cars that I want to drive. <laughs> There's some homes that I want to live in. Yes. There's some bathrooms that I want to have inside of my house. Uh -huh. I, I got a dream bathroom yeah. that I want that I want in my house. Yeah. Yeah. I, I ain't got that. I ain't got that. Yeah. I want the I want the, the, the bathroom man with the shower in the ceiling and the shower coming out the wall. I want I want to steam. I want I want I want to see in the bathroom. Now listen, if you don't want that, I'm not telling you you have to want that. I'm telling you what I want. That's it. Amen. Don't get mad at me because I want something. Uh -huh. And I'm not going to get mad at you because you want what you want. But the Bible says this, if thou canst believe, then all things are possible. Yes. So when I give, I'm giving based on where I want to go, yes. not where I am, mm -hmm. but where I want to go. Well, if you give, well. then you can receive. Yeah. Yes. If you don't give, then you close off the receiving part. Mm -hmm. Put hey, your hands together. Amen. Amen. We know that this is first Sunday. First Sunday, right? We're gonna have our communion now.